Hey guys. Hey guys, here's another simple teaching tool, tennis ball on a piece of power cord. So, um, normal tennis balls are about a pound to pound fifty each, that's uh, probably two or three dollars each. But if you buy from uh, on eBay, you can buy them from tennis clubs that are finished with them. Obviously, their standard for a usable tennis ball is quite high, so they get rid of them while they're while they're um while they're still in quite good condition and they're sold for, for you know for dog toys or something like that but but you can buy these for probably 20 pence each if you buy them in bulk on eBay so uh, if you're a karate teacher so what you do is you take your tennis ball and you bore a hole through it so what I do is I stick a screwdriver in first just to make the puncture so that the pressure's gone and then I get a scalpel and just carve the hole out that was the easiest way I found I tried drilling I tried using a screwdriver all the way it didn't work so um so you take that hole through it and um and then you put a piece of power cord through I uh, I don't know if you can see this but I just melted the end here with a match just so that it doesn't come fluffy and go undone then I tie a double knot on the end and there you go now you've got a tennis ball on a on a piece of string now a tennis ball on a piece of string serves multiple purposes. First of all, I'm going to show you the um, crafty purpose. So if you put it onto, this is a broomstick. You can buy these for about 50 pence to a pound each on eBay. If you buy them in bulk again, buy 20 or 30 at a time. So this is an investment if you're an instructor. Probably going to cost you about 30 pounds to get this set up for, for 20 of these. So so you you put your tennis ball on the end of your stick like that so it can swing. And then you have one partner holding these out, and the other partner has to step forwards and lunge and just jab it. So it, it becomes an accuracy and a distancing drill. So so the students have got something to hit that's finer than a uh, a focus pad. Obviously, a focus pads have often got little marks drawn on them to aim for, but you don't really know. You don't get that tactile sense of if you're hitting it accurately. And here's a good way. So so first of all, they have to hit. Uh, they just step forwards and jab it. Then you get them to lunge forwards and reverse punch it. And and uh, you know, not super hard. They're not trying to make it go. You know, circle circle round. They're just trying to reverse punch it and get it moving. Okay. But then, uh, later on, what you can do is if you tell them to hit it really hard, it will completely swing around the pole. Like it's probably going too fast to see, but when it swings around the pole here, then that they get this return and they have to evade it. So, so they need to be thinking about their escape as, or their retreat or their, their head movement or whatever so they don't get hit by the return. So that's a good start. And then of course you can do front kicks and round kicks as well, which work really, really well with this. And for those of you who do um, jumping kicks and, um, uh, and hook kicks, it's a real fine discipline to be able to hit something so, so relatively small. Um, so that's a great martial arts use, um, a great, Use for those of you who do uh, who do karate or taekwondo or something like that. Just another tool, you know. We're always looking for ways to hide complexity, and this works well for adults or kids. But yeah, kids particularly love it. So you can use it for jazz. You can increase the distance to use the footwork, and you can do reverse punches to maximise hip turn, and again you can increase the distance to make that harder, it's quite a good skill for a tournament fighters. Then if she hits it really hard, so it spins all the way around, she also has to get back out of the way of it, so it doesn't hit her in the head, okay? Then we can also move on to kicks, front kicks, so I'm not rising up underneath it, busting it. Okay. Or you can do a snap kick. So I'll uh, well, snap kick like the king of the king again. Up, up, coin. So flat across the foot. There you go. Okay. So that's not the whole level kick. Okay. You can even do round kicks. Hook kicks. Okay. Yeah, that's a hard one. We didn't expect that it was moving anyway. Okay. So, hook kicks. Here's another way that you can use them here now. I've got two on a piece of string, and um, I use them as substitute nunchucks. Okay, so I can't really do it and stay in, in shot here, but 
So what they enable you to do is worry about the shape. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it sitting down. But they allow you to worry about the shape without the grips and everything like that. So so you know, as I say, to make these probably costs about a pound for two, maybe two pound for two, I don't know, probably a pound for two, um, just a little bit over. And, and so if you're running a nunchaku class and you're, you know you, a lot of the students will be reluctant to buy double nunchaku early on, um, and even when even when they do have them, uh, uh, drills like this where they're afraid of getting hit, um, or you know when you start going around your neck, and, you know you can almost do everything with a, a, a nunchaku that you can do with these. Or vice versa, um, but without the weight and the chain. So uh, a very, very inexpensive way to add some variety to your nunchaku class. But as I say, they I'm rambling a little bit because I'm I'm using them as I'm speaking. But but it's far easier because of the weighting of them. It's far easier to be working on your shape when you're not worried about the form of holding the nunchaku and then once you've got the 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 part the um the shape like the tornado i was just trying to show you there um it, once you've got that that shape then it's easy to put nunchaku back in in the student's hands or in your hands if you're the one who's practicing and uh, substitute the the tennis balls for nunchaku so they're another useful tool to use in the dojo so uh i hope they gave you some inspiration guys and that you have a great day well, so Tennis balls, a uh, good tough super nunchuck, so you can use it like this, you can do all the stuff that you can do with a normal nunchuck. Except you can't do catches because you're down the string. Okay, so it's useful for that, but it's most useful when you're doing doubles. So here. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take the time to rate and comment and it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe. Thank you.